Breaking news has come out regarding Tesla's cars that has completely flipped the market. This news could cause a dent in Elon Musk's future plans for Tesla. This has sent sharp waves throughout the entire industry and has no doubt reinforced a divide between the Tesla bulls and the bears. Could this news make Tesla enemy number one in the eyes of the government and make Elon Musk an even more polarizing figure? And what does this mean for your investors in Tesla? Let's find out. So I was doing some browsing on the internet, looking up topics to bring to you guys, and I came across this article from the New York Times on Tesla. And man oh man, everyone's having a field day with it. I originally read this on the New York Times, but it has now received coverage from CNBC, CNN, CBS. I mean, pretty much all the major news outlets have given this some coverage. So let's get into it and then we'll discuss it from an investor's perspective. Tesla to recall 362,000 cars with its full self-driving system. Tesla is recalling more than 362,000 cars equipped with its full self-driving driver assistance system after government regulators found it increased the risk of accidents. The company's technology, which can steer, accelerate, brake and change lanes on its own allows vehicles to travel above legal speed limits and through intersections in an all awful and unpredictable manner, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said Thursday in documents posted on its website. Testing and analysis by the safety agency showed that a component of the system that steers cars on city streets could create an unreasonable risk to motor vehicle safety based on insufficient adherence for traffic safety laws. The agency said Tesla was not aware of any deaths or injuries caused by the flaws the agency had identified. The safety agency said Thursday that Tesla agreed to the recall and had planned to fix the flaws through an over-the-air update to the affected vehicles. According to a letter posted on the agency's website, the automaker intends to notify owners of the recall vehicles by mail no later than April 15. So here are my thoughts on this. Obviously, safety is a priority here. One thing to note here is that there's been some drama over whether or not they should be called a recall. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration administration has said that this is indeed a recall and has ordered Tesla to fix this. But Tesla has maintained that this is a fix that will be provided over the air and as such should not be labeled a recall. But regardless of what you want to call it, it's a big issue that all the involved parties are taking very, very seriously. Now, I believe that Tesla will fully cooperate with the investigation and based on their track record with cooperating with concerns raised about their vehicles in the past, I have no reason to believe that this time will be any different and that they will comply with any requests that are brought forward with regards to investigating what's going on with your vehicles. Now, with regards to this, another thing to bring up is that Tesla is really, really, really focused on making sure that autonomous driving is brought to the consumer. Why, you might ask? Well, it really goes back to Tesla's overall strategy, and I'll bring you up to speed here. Now, Tesla is in the second phase of its strategic execution. Phase one was to accelerate a move from hydrocarbon to a solar electric economy by providing an affordable electric car. Now, this is broken down into four main steps, and you can read this on their website. I'll drop a link down below. Step one, build a sports car. Step two, build an even more affordable sports car sports car. Step three, use that money to build an even more affordable sports car. And step four, provide affordable electric energy storage solutions. Now today, Tesla provides cars, EV charging stations, and power products, which is used to provide its solar energy storage solutions. So we can look at phase one and say that it's been considered a success for the most part. Now, why is this important? Because the success of phase one has basically built the foundation for phase two, or as Elon Musk likes to call it, master plan part two. Again, this is available on the website. I'll leave link down below. Basically, part two or part two of Elon Musk's master plan boils down to creating solar roofs with seamlessly integrated battery storage, expanding the electric vehicle product line to address all major segments, developing a self-driving capability that is 10 times safer than manual via massive fleet learning, and enabling your car to make money for you when you aren't using it. Now, step one resulted in Tesla by Solar City and combining their technologies. Step two is taking those EV offerings one step further or providing an electric truck, electric buses, and also an electric semi. Now, if we look at step three and four, this is where FSD comes into play. So right now, Tesla is feeding data from vehicles with FSD into its overall learning system. So kind of think of it like crowdfunded learning. The more cars that have FSD enabled, the more data it gets. And overall, the more efficient the system is because it has more data to learn from. For those say, thank you for a brief history lesson. What does this have to do with a Tesla recall? Well, check it out. Now that we have the history, we now know just how important FSD and autonomous driving is to Tesla's overall strategy. And now we can understand that this is something that Tesla values very seriously and you're taking this report very seriously and they've got to work to fix it. Matter of fact, they've already planned to deploy the fix through an over-the-air software update. But apparently none of this matters because as soon as this news came out, the market's reaction was to promptly sell off. The Tesla stock price immediately fell off a cliff, dropping 9% to where it's hovered lately. Now why is this? Because in general, the market has 
associates bad news or negative news with a negative impact to the company's bottom line. And no one wants to be the one taking L's on your investment. However, some investors do take advantage of sell-offs to either average down your investment or to open an investment in a stock at a cheaper price. Think of it as waiting until your favorite stock goes on sale or your favorite investment goes on sale. You'd rather buy it for a cheaper price, right? Exactly. Same thing applies here. Now, this news, is this something that affects Tesla and its core business? Well, let's take a look. Tesla's automotive revenue, based on its last earnings report, accounted for 80% of its total revenue in 2022. Now, out of auto sales, Tesla stays at approximately 400,000 of its North American, that is US and Canadian customers, have access to FSD beta. And that's a lot of cars with FSD. But is this something that fundamentally is required for operation of the vehicle? I don't think so. Actually, you know what? Let me help you out. The answer to that is no, because you can still maintain basic operations of the Tesla vehicle without having to require FSD. Now, also, in addition to this, Tesla has maintained that enabling the FSD features require active supervision and strongly emphasizes that the software will remain in beta status until it deems it ready to pursue worldwide regulatory approval. This is outlined clearly on the website about FSD. So even if you buy a Tesla, you don't need FSD to operate the car, and this recall will not affect your daily use. You can actually just turn it off until you get notified of the over-the-air update, and your car will drive and operate fine. It's just that obviously without FSD, you're not going to be able to take advantage of those FSD features. So that's number one. So we've established that the issues with FSD is not fundamentally critical for the operation of the vehicle. So let's take a look at what the company overall is projecting for 2023. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the latest investor presentation that can be found on the company website. Now, in their 2023 outlook, they project to be ahead of their 50% growth rate. Now, even if there's some negative impact on sales, it looks like the expectation, at least from management standpoint, is that the growth of production will fall in line with the projected growth rate, which is somewhere around 50%. Now, this is simply due to the fact that this defect does not fundamentally impact the basic operation of the vehicle. Let me repeat that. This defect does not fundamentally impact the daily basic operation of the vehicle. Now, if this was something that was critical to the operation of the vehicle and the basic functions that we'll look at another story but since it's not then there's less to worry about now tesla maintains that they have liquidity and cash on hand to manage any expenses so it's safe to assume that any additional expense that comes from a result of implementing this recall will be able to be covered by the liquid cash that they have on hand and lastly they maintain that they'll be able to continue to have the highest profit margins out of all car manufacturers so why do we say this so we say this because it's always a good idea as an investor to keep an eye on the you to see how any reports that come out about the company that you're invested in will impact their core business. Now, in this case, it's good to keep an eye on it, but given Tesla's track record and the fact that this does not impact the core functionality of your products, I don't believe that this is something to worry about in the long term and the market is just overacting. But then again, this is just my opinion. What do you think? Do you think this is going to impact Tesla's bottom line? You think that the impact of this recall will reflect? in your next earnings. What do you think about Tesla as a whole? Leave your thoughts and comment down below. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.